Today, Casey Jones from Hydra Pest is a native of the small town Thatcher in southeastern Arizona. His journey through various industries from construction and remodeling to carpet cleaning eventually led him into the world of door-to-door -door sales in the pest industry. Starting your own business is not for the faint of hearts. There's all these different ways uh, to run and build and scale a pest control company um, and all these different ways that you could or should do it depending on what market you're in. Um, but to Casey's point, in the beginning, you kind of have to decide why you're doing it. Welcome to the Bug Bucks podcast, a podcast designed to help you become a bug money millionaire. Today's episode is brought to you by Bug Bucks Plus, the number one training and education platform designed to help you build and scale your pest control company. I'm your host, Eric Bassett. And of course, right next to me, I got Jake Klaus. How's it going, man? What's up, Eric and my Bug Bucksers? What's happening, guys? So we, uh, we're actually recording back-to-back -back episodes. Uh, so if you caught the next or the last episode, you might have heard that we are recording from uh, Casa de Klaus. Yep. Yep. Klaus Manor, actually. Yeah, Klaus, Klaus Manor. Yeah, Klaus Manor is, there you the, go. is the name. Yeah. yeah. So if you're watching on YouTube, you can see that we're hanging out together. Usually we're uh, apart, but uh, we're trying to remedy that situation and record episodes next to each other. Yeah, I was going to change my shirt between episodes <laughs> yeah we forgot to do that so that it looked like gave the illusion that uh -huh. we were recording on different days but uh our last episode went right up to this episode yep yeah yeah alas we uh, cannot make a wardrobe change nope we should just uh we'll have to do some, what do you call those the quick change artists oh yeah, yeah. just a yeah you no know, rip away pants yeah tear away i could, pants and do, it that I could do that that'd be awesome yeah we'll have to get some bug bucks versions of those that'll be a good thing to spend money on <laughs> right of course <laughs> Well, we got an awesome guest for you guys today that you are going to love. But before we bring them on, just want to remind everybody listening, the best way to receive new episodes is by subscribing to our show on your preferred podcast platform like Apple, YouTube, Audible, or Spotify. If you love the show, please leave us a rating and a review. Make sure to check out our Facebook group, Bug Bucks Plus. That is B-U-G-B-U-X Plus. We've got over 4,000 other pest control owners in that group waiting to connect with you and share their thoughts. That's also the best way for you to share your feedback on our show and have your questions highlighted and discussed here on the podcast. So make sure you find us on Facebook and join the group. Let's talk about our guest for today, Casey Jones from Hydra Pest. I'm going to give you a little bit of an intro, Casey, from this bio I've got written up for you. Uh, Casey is a native of the small town Thatcher in southeastern Arizona. His journey through various industries from construction and remodeling to carpet cleaning eventually led him into the world of door-to-door -door sales in the pest industry. Along the path, Casey wore many hats, each experience shaping his professional career in the pest industry. Casey discovered his true passion for the industry when given the opportunity to manage a branch at Edge Pest Control, now known as Sela Pest Control. Today, he brings his passion back to his roots, launching and expanding Hydra Pest Control. Casey, that's an awesome bio, dude. Welcome to the show. Hey. Yeah, yeah, man. Wealth what? of experience. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So before we start, I just got to, I, I know you probably hear this all the time, but Casey Jones, <laughs> yeah. uh, you, you get a lot of Ninja Turtle references with that, right? <laughs> you know, when you guys bring up the name Casey Jones, depending on the person, uh, they'll, they'll bring up Casey Jones from the Grateful Dead or Casey mm. Jones, the train engineer. So every name I get or reference to it kind of dates you and it tells me how old you are. So I can tell okay. you guys are from the 80s. <laughs> Uh, yep, I was born in 1980. Yep. Yeah. yep, yeah, and uh, you know, I was I was there. I was there, yeah. man, when the Ninja Turtles <laughs> came out. You know, I remember when yeah. they came out. And Casey Jones, Casey Jones was bad to the bone. Uh, he had was it a golf bag that he carried around? He had a he fought it's with hockey, hockey sticks, hockey sticks, hockey a cricket bag. bat. Remember, he had a cricket bat too. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, and at first he was not he wasn't cool with the Ninja Turtles. Like they mm -hmm. had, there was mm -hmm. some, there was a rub there when he first, when they first met and then he realized yeah. that they're on the same team. And so, yeah. <laughs> kind of like made... a, ren a renegade. Yeah. Yep, yeah. Renegade. Yeah. That's sweet. Nice. Dude. Okay. Yeah. So I got to ask, uh, Hydra Pest, give me the, give me the skinny on the name. How'd you guys come up with that? Everybody, um, they, they hear the name and they always say Hell Hydra. <laughs> and it cracks me up because it, awesome, it, it, it sticks. That was not at all the, the reason I named the company Hydra Pest. Um, I started coming up with a few names and 
I, I didn't want to have a, a name that was just my last name, Pest Control, because I wanted mm-hmm. to create a good brand that was recognized. So um, I started looking into Hydra. Hydra was uh, this mythological creature, it's a seven-headed beast or whatever that uh, Hercules fights. Mm-hmm. And every time you cut off a head, uh, two more grow back. Yeah. Yep. And so, so to me, the Hydra creature it resembles resilience, tenacity, um, vigilance, uh, and so I wanted to have a company that represented that mentality. And then later, finding out an, an actual Hydra creature, and this is getting a little nerdy, but the Hydra no, creature is no actually doubt. this little uh, organism in fresh water, and if it's left to its elements, is actually it'll live forever. So. Huh. This tiny little organism, and it looks kind of like that uh, um, that creature, the uh, seven-headed beast. Mm-hmm. But it has all these tentacles, tiny, tiny little thing. But yeah, if, if you just leave it to its elements, it cannot die. Scientists have done a bunch of research on these hydra creatures, so Whoa, immortality dude. right there. Yeah. Well, you know, with with those two, or with those two, like the mythological creature and the and the actual creature. That lends itself to some serious badass branding. I oh, mean, yeah. you have like a Hydra with the seven heads, and <laughs> right, right now it it focused on the one of the products that we use. The circles right here is a mm-hmm. micro capsule product, um, but right, it's sure. it's a resilient product, and uh, that's why I like it. Fits with our branding, but I I thought of ways to try to incorporate some of the hyper creature into some of our branding haven't gotten there yet that's why i'm reaching out to matt see if he can help me with that stuff so <laughs> oh yeah sweet when you do when you do send send us t-shirts yes, I, i'm a medium eric is a large you know yeah yeah, yeah dude i got it we gotta start doing that more often every time we talk to somebody on the show and they have some really cool branding i just need to we need to do some uh swag swap that's true yeah kevin rife sent us hats yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, wink, wink. No, yeah. uh, no pressure. Uh, the last guy we had in the podcast sent us some cool stuff. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah I think it's awesome. You know. Yeah. Well, you if we had Bug free, Bucks t-shirts that we could send to the guests, that'd probably be. Yes, it's it's a swap. You know, yeah. we're not. Yeah. yeah, we'll we'll swap you. We'll swap you swag. Yeah, of course. Yep. Um, yeah, we should do a little highlight on the show. Like, if people want to send in their their cool swag, we'll like be like little display like oh and so and so brought us this hat that's right you know? <laughs> yep <laughs> that'll be sweet i i love that the brand that you have you got some uh was it greek mythology in there and uh science yeah you know like we we actually love nerding out on science. stuff so yeah, i can tell from your previous content so i like it <laughs> yeah so what's uh and, and hydra has been around f- since when when did you what was your guys's first year yeah, so we started in spring of 2018. Nice. 18 or 19? 18. 2018. 18. Oh, Sorry, 2018. Okay. Did I say 19? 2018. No, I, just, got it. I got can't. It. 18. I, I can't. My ears. I'm, I'm old. I've been here for a while. So 2018, so we're going on, what, six years now, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, this will be going into your sixth year. So right. uh, what's what's been the big focus for Hydra? So do you guys grow with door to door or were you trying to do more organic referrals? Do you guys use any kind of lead sharing platforms at all? Yeah. So the, the unique thing about, I mean, we're in a market that's really small compared to what most of our users or listeners are in. Um, and so I, I just wanted to start a company where I grew up and I love killing, killing bugs. I love pest control, the whole idea on it. Mm-hmm. But I recognized that the town where I was at, it was just, I, I felt like it was behind in the industry on what was mm. actually out there and available. So um, I, I just wanted to bring that modern approach that I'd come to experience and love with the previous employer and bring it back to the small town. So the, the goal for me in starting out was to bring this modern service, a modern approach that seemed um, a lot of the, the community was experiencing an archaic service method. Mm. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, dude, that's nice. And uh, and nothing against them, because props to the other sure. companies that were are here. It's just they've they've done some incredible stuff. We thought there's a lot of there's so much uh, technology and automation out there that would really enhance that customer's experience for pest control. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Well, I mean, you know, when me and Jake got into um, the industry, 
I mean, I was still doing paper contracts and oh, stuff yeah. like that. So that was, yeah. I mean, you know, selling on iPads and having technicians that have iPads. Cell phones and, barely had cameras. Yeah. Back yep. then. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So it's like you can even take a picture of a oh. contract and yeah. then send it to no, you somebody. Know what? Yeah. I remember, I remember sitting there daydreaming with the guy in my sales team my very first summer because I had just bought an iPod. And it was like the gray screen and the wheel and the yeah. clicky. And then we had these, you know, cell phones. And me and him were sitting around one Saturday afternoon. And we were like, dude, imagine if they took a cell phone and an iPod <laughs> and put them together. And you had like a cell yeah. pod. And we're like, yeah, cell pod. And then a couple of years later, there it was. Ta-da. Million yeah. dollar idea, dude. Yeah. Billion dollar idea. I should have, dang it, I should have pitched it. Oh, you missed yeah. your opportunity, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. you know, technology has such an integral integral part of pest control now i mean you think about you know all the routing that we do mm -hmm. i mean when same thing the first one of the first pest control companies we worked for um if you stayed at the office late enough you would see the office ladies set out the paper invoices mm -hmm. for all the technicians in all the different piles for everybody's route right yep and uh Looking back at that, that's wild to think about. Now it's yeah. all automated. You know, the technician just looks at his iPad, uh, refreshes his route for the day. Yeah. You know, all those, like if you want to change something, you just hit it's refresh. All real time. Yeah, it's yeah. wild. That's crazy. Dude. Well, okay. So, so um, Casey, you have a, a varied work experience history. You've done construction. You've done, was it carpet cleaning? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you've done all of it. You've done door to door. Uh, so, like walk us through that. Like how how did how did your journey to being a, a PCO transpire? Um, I, I feel like I have a pretty unique approach to uh, getting started in the industry. My my dad was in construction by trade, mm -hmm. and I I grew up. I mean, as a little toddler, I had a hammer in my hand. Just <laughs> always, there's always a project going on around our house. And our house to this day that I grew up in is still not finished. So I, <laughs> I became very familiar with what the process is on, on building a house, um, the framing, the concrete, all of that. Um, and that, that led into my first job, my first career. And I was just tired of the labor. It was fast-breaking work. And so I looked for other opportunities. Um, I've just gotten married, and so we we're looking for other opportunities to advance the income. And I was given a, an opportunity to go apply for a job cleaning carpet. The company called Zero Res, they're in Phoenix. And before that job, I actually despised and hated salespeople. Like I thought they were the scum of the earth. And yeah. <laughs> that that job actually introduced me to the idea of persuading ethical sales and uh, interacting with customers. And I, that's why I fell in love with helping customers be happy and satisfied with their service or their products that they're purchasing. Um, and the service-based industry was introduced to me. And from there, just progressed into different roles and positions with that company. And then I had a guy, a friend introduced me to door-to-door -to -door sales um, with, with the ad pass control. And I went and, and worked for them for, for several years. And that was a very learning, uh, growing experience for me. They gave me opportunity to be uh, a manager, to run their servicing branch, and then to run a, a customer care center for them as well, too. And so um, I look back at them and just grateful for every opportunity and step of the way that they've given me because it's really helped shape. Um, honestly, the way I look at it, it's helped shape my family's um, future for the next 20, 30, 40 years, like that small, those few years that I put into it helped uh, create what we have now at Hydro Pest Control too, the structure and, and so forth. So um, the, uh, yeah, the, op the opportunity there in, in every company I've had, I, I think my mindset was, how does this work? What's my job role? I'm going to ask a ton of questions. I'm going to try to understand it. And every job on role I'm going to try to leave a, in a better position than where I was when I started that. And I think that helped me propel my career, my position, the opportunity faster and put me into different various leadership positions with them too. So. Oh man, I love that. That's awesome. Yeah.
That's actually yeah. really, it's a really refreshing take on it because, you know, a lot of the guys that we talk to and, uh, you know, maybe rightfully so, sometimes they don't have very good experiences with the companies that they leave, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes you can also tell just by talking to somebody, um, whether it's in interviews that we've had with potential technicians or whoever it is, where they're just kind of... Uh, they don't share the same uh, experience that you did, right? They're kind of upset. They're angry. You know, they yeah. they definitely didn't want to leave it better than they found it. They didn't even care how they left it, yeah. right? Um, and they didn't take the time to soak in and absorb all of the opportunities they have, right? You know, whereas, you know, you have all these different opportunities with different jobs and you're thinking, okay, you know, what can I learn from this? You know, what can I take from this and apply to other opportunities in my life? Um, and you're slowly but surely kind of piecing together what will end up being your future opportunity, right? But sometimes right. guys just can't, they can't see that, you know, and it's kind of sad, but it's, uh, it's nice that you've had something like that for you. That's great. I, I think it's hard to have that perspective, though, in the moment. I'm not going to say oh, along yeah. the way I had that same thought, but now I look back at it and I'm, for all the challenges and the, the, the hardships that went through and each of those steps, Man, I look at it and just incredibly grateful because it's taught me a lot of skills and and abilities. I'm, I don't have the, that college degree um, mm -hmm. that some individuals have, but that doesn't necessarily determine whether you're going to be effective in your career or not. Too hundred percent. Yep. Help. Yeah, yeah. Let's uh, let's do a show of hands. Uh, who in who in this podcast recording <laughs> right now has a college degree? Oh, wait, no, who doesn't have who a doesn't, yeah, oh, who, I don't, yeah, I do not have a goal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I say do not. Um, no, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, whenever, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, is it, is he dumb or just doesn't know how to listen? Yeah. No, whenever I see somebody flying a Boise State flag or wearing a Boise State t-shirt, you know, I say, oh man, are you, are you a Bronco? Yeah. Oh yeah, man. Yeah. I, Boise State. I love Boise State. That's the, that's the college I dropped out from. <laughs> So, yeah, well, and it's, that's the thing, like it, and especially nowadays, I think, you know, you go back a few generations, a few decades and dude, if you dropped out of college, like it's sayonara for you, like that's not, yeah. you're not going to go anywhere. At least that was the vibe. Yeah. But now, you know, there's some opportunities where if you just, uh, put your head down and grind, yeah. uh, you can make a really good life for yourself and you can provide really good opportunities for other people too. Yeah. Well, the trades. I mean, what we do is a trade, mm -hmm. right? Pest control is a trade. Uh, it's like plumbing or uh, electric or, or whatever, yeah. carpentry, you know? Yeah. So, so our trade, um, it doesn't require a college degree. It requires figuring it out. It requires on the job training. It requires licensing and mm -hmm. requires study and it requires all of the things, uh, that you would, that you would need in any career occupation where you're applying your hard work and your mindset and mentality. Um, but the difference is, is that you can become, you know, like it says at the beginning of the show, a bug money millionaire without racking up a hundred thousand dollars in student loan debt. Yeah. You know, it's crazy. I can't remember where I met this individual, but, um, this kid was like, he just graduated from college and he was, uh, he was doing some, like internship or something like that, where he wasn't even getting paid. And I was like, and I was like, dude, Ooh. why? Wh how, it doesn't like, do you, do you live with your parents still? Or do you plan on doing that forever? Like how, yeah. how do you have 60, $70,000 in student loans? And your plan is to go do charity work yeah, an unpaid internship. Yeah, That's doesn't, rough, dude. Yeah. Not that there's anything wrong with charity work, yeah. but Dude, do charity work on the side of <laughs> having a profession, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. what's been the, I mean, you know, like we said, we're going on what, six years now. Uh, what's your big focus for 2024? What's, uh, what's Hydropest have lined up on the docket? Sure. So the uh, big, big goal for me, I, I try to look at it where we are in a small market, our our competition is relatively low compared to where you guys are at, or even if I'm considering my biggest market, which is Phoenix. Mm -hmm. we, we really do have a low competition. We also have very few um, population as well, too. So mm -hmm. uh, the way I, I try to approach business and instill in our, our culture here is I want to operate as if we are amongst a thousand other companies 
and any one of our customers has the opportunity to go find somebody else as quickly as that. So, yeah, um, I, I operate in a mindset of accountability. Um, we take our, our customers' feedback to heart, and we try to we try to implement a lot of processes um, to minimize um, mistakes or errors or the uh, make it as easy as possible for our technicians to make decisions on their own. Um, and so goal, goals for us in 2024 is to continue in a mindset of accountability, uh, looking back at our processes, our systems, and uh, now that we have delegated roles and um, I can step away a little bit from the day-to-day -day servicing, I can make sure that our management is uh, helping our technicians not only execute the job, but understanding why they execute the job a certain way, um, a process that we implement, helping them understand why it is implemented that way. For example, like our our service reminders, why do they get sent out two days before? Why do they get a text message? Why do we let them know expectations on the time windows? Like all those kind of things, I want to make sure that our technicians understand the why behind it because um, I, I think it ties back into a podcast you guys did um, a while back, 104 or 108, where why your customers cancel. Oh, yeah. Uh, yep. You gave, you gave a, a list of reasons. And it's so funny that the the reasons customers cancel, it starts way before they even initiate service with you. Yep. And so we really are trying to implement that accountability starts from the very beginning. Um, that's That's been the big focus for us, 2024. Yeah, hundred percent. And it's, it's funny. I'll drop a little, little teaser. Um, you know, we have a, um, eventually we have a course coming out on bug bucks plus, um, that's all about retention and, mm -hmm. uh, it highlights that exact same thing that you said, the culture that you're trying to build in your company, which is, Hey, there are reasons that your customer will cancel that are deeply rooted in the very beginning of their experience. Like sometimes it's before they even pick up the phone to call you, right? Like how they experience your brand and doubts that they have and reservations they have that might not even be about you, right? But they're that type of consumer, you know? And then eventually they call you, you know, six, seven months later and they want to cancel and, and they'll talk about some key thing. They'll be like, oh yeah, your technician was late. Uh, or you guys never, you know, I never got that call ahead for my appointment and I want to cancel, right? And um, it's really difficult to be a, a, a business owner trying to navigate all these other little things that could cause a prompt for a cancellation call, uh, let alone trying to maintain all the standards that you have for all these things. Yeah. And, you know, like you're doing, having those employees understand the why behind the what, I mean, that gives them a more purpose-driven route to their job. Yep. You know, it's yep. like, instead of thinking, oh man, I got to send out all these service reminders and uh, that's a, it's a huge pain, right? It's like, no, I got I to gotta make sure that all these customers are notified because if they aren't, like that could cause a lot of complications and confusion. Yeah. Um, yeah. Casey, I got, a, I got a question for you. So you're in a, you're in a uh, kind of limited population wise market, right? Yeah. Uh, so as, as you consider, as you consider your growth plan or growth goals for your company, what would you say you're more likely to approach, uh, expanding your, your, your service or your product offering, you know, like going into things other than, you know, pest control, uh, or expanding to expanding your pest control line to, to further markets. Like what's your, what's your, what's your growth? What's your growth idea for expanding outside of what you're doing right now? Um, yeah, that's a, that's a great question too. I think that's kind of the unique thing is that, well, maybe that's why a lot of larger uh, franchise companies or larger companies, they, they really kind of stay away from the smaller markets because they know at some point there's going to be a cap or a plateau on revenue stream. Yeah. They don't um, want to touch it. I think the, the first thing is you got to have defined to you that happiness cannot be a that monetary value. Mm -hmm. and honestly, I'm just, I'm just happy to be able to contribute and give back to our community. So uh, growth strategies for us on how we can 
add in all these other revenue streams is we we really do have to be very diverse um, and uh, focused on a wide variety of services. We we live in an area where there's termite, there's live animal, mm -hmm. um, there's, there's, there's scorpions, there's wasps, there's Africanized bees, and so and it, and mm -hmm. we control as well. So we in the very beginning we focused on a narrow service offering, service line extension of just general pests. And this is one of the termites and the weeds. And then um, for me, to uh, increase that revenue capacity is adding in services that kind of tuck underneath a, a pest control industry. So um, I, I don't want to sit there and start going out and looking to hang Christmas lights. That's not the agenda, but <laughs> I, I, I think even if yeah. we cap out or plateau at a certain amount, to me that's okay. Um, just because my my happiness is not determined by, determined by getting into a seven or eight figure income. Sure, it's okay. really by the the impact of our customers and what we're making, and if we're able to do it well, and and this company's going to exist twenty years down the road. So yeah. that's how I see it. Dude, that's a. So we were having uh, this conversation with another group of uh, PCOs that we're part of. Um, and the topic came up, you know, does having does the size of your pest control company really matter? Right. Mm -hmm. And like some of these guys have whatever $500,000 pest control companies, $5 million, $10 or $10 million companies. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and, uh, ultimately it, it doesn't really matter what that top line revenue number is. It's all about the, the way that it impacts your life. Right. Um, the contributions that you're going to be able to make, uh, to your own network, your family, your employees, you know? And I think that that's awesome that Casey has this perspective where, you know, maybe you're in a small town, like a smaller community, um, and maybe there are some, at least it seems like there's some limitations there, top line revenue wise one day. But uh, I think that's actually really bold because you could establish yourself in a smaller community um, and then identify yourself as the premier provider for pest control in that community. Right. And just let that permeate through everything get a lot of market share. Yeah. And then as that community grows, which all communities eventually do that, right? Um, then dude, you've got, you've got a big piece of the market. And then when all these other pest control companies are like, oh, we want a piece of that, Casey's gonna be there already like, suckas, I've been here the whole time, so. <laughs> yeah. Well, and at the, be at the beginning of the conversation too, you said um, that, that you've, got, you've got good people in the right places, so you're able to take just a little bit of a step back too right um so are you able to are you able to spend more time with your family and is that is that the idea is that the goal for you yeah i i uh i think your previous guest um he and i talk occasionally and we talk about the uh, the role of growing and being an entrepreneur and it's really um starting your own business is not for the faint of heart it i there's been many times um yeah, I've come home and I've just been in tears just with how hard the day was. But I always had this end goal in mind of I need to duplicate myself. I need to create systems. I need to get this thing going and focus on automating it so I can spend time with my family. Because my kids are still young. Um, but I, I really had this idea in mind that if I can get this thing smoothly operating, I can have that liberty down the road to spend a little bit more time with the family. But it, man, tons of tears and tons of uh, tough nights and tough, tough hours put forth to get to this point. Yeah, it takes its toll. It really does. And I, you know, I bet that every PCO who's started his own company listening on, in on this has, has their own experience and their mm -hmm. own history and stories of the struggle and the, and the not in the pit of your stomach and, you know, just, just the sucky crappy part about starting a, a business, you know, and the time flies, you know, when we started our company, our oldest was six. <laughs> and, wow. um, and now, I mean, he turned 17 this June and it's like, where, where did the time go? And, um, for me, I'm a, I'm a really sentimental guy. You know, I'm a real, like, and I think that, I think that a lot of fathers are like that nowadays. You know, when we were kids, it was like dad worked and mom raised the kids and that's kind of the way life was, you know, but it's not like that anymore. Like fathers are way more involved in their kids' lives now than they have ever been. 
And so, you know, when you're, when you're in the grind and you're busting your butt and you're just like slaving away to grow your business in the background, your family's growing up, Mm -hmm. you know, your kids are growing up. So, so it is so admirable, uh, you know, hearing Casey say that, yeah, the whole idea is to get automate automations and systems in place so I can spend more time with my family. And you know, you don't get those years back. And we, we've been at a place, I think, I think about six years in or about seven years in, kind of right about where Casey, uh, where you are with your business is right about the place where uh, I could, we could step back a little bit more and spend more time as a family. And now it's cool, man. I mean, like we do online school for our kids at home. We don't homeschool, but we do online school for the kids. And our, like, we can go and do whatever we want. Like last week, we were on vacation as a family for a whole week. And everybody else, all the other kids were in school. So, <laughs> I mean, that's kind of the dream, right? That's the dream with, with entrepreneurship is being able to put in all the work to create a thing that, that you can then have other people running so that you can spend time the way that you want to spend your time. Yeah. Just to say something else to that too. I think for a lot of CCOs that are in their early stages or starting out, I, I think it's crucial for them to um, begin with the end in mind and, mm-hmm. and look at what what do I really want to create in five years or or in ten years? Like, do yeah. do I just want to be my own employee to the same company that I'm creating? Like the the idea of starting your own CCO company, I made fun of those guys when I was at uh, edge pest control. And then here I am going and doing it. <laughs> yeah. But I, I think the, the mindset um, was very different when I made that decision. I, I did not intend to go and break away from this company so I could become like them or better. Um, my, my intent was just I really genuinely care about trying to take care of my family. And mm-hmm. this is something I enjoy doing. And so I'm going to create something that uh, will bring me closer to my family and allow me a process to take care of them long-term. And um, I, I think too many guys often get into the the uh, PCO or the industry of pest control because they want to sell out in four or five years or, mm-hmm. or get that two or three X multiple, which, which is fine and that's totally ethical and legal to do. But I, I think it really drives your your focus on your day-to-day actions when you have that as an end goal versus you're just trying to uh, provide income for your family and provide something good for the community you're in. Um, but yeah, definitely you, you have to begin with the end goal in mind. Where do you want to be at? Dude, I, I love it. And, so you know, bonus points yeah. to Casey for doing the uh, the seven habits of highly effective people, the Stephen Covey reference. Yeah. Uh, begin with the end in mind, which I can't I can't remember exactly which habit that is. Um, but uh, awesome book. If you guys haven't read it and you're listening, definitely read that book. Uh, I've probably read that book, I don't know, probably six, seven, eight times maybe. Really? Mm-hmm. Um, it's just... And One it's such, time for each habit. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Get it, dude. It's an easy read, it right. um, and the audiobook version of it's awesome because Stephen Covey reads it. Mm. Um, but uh, I, I love that you bring it up. We've talked about this before. You know, there's there's all these different ways uh, to run and build and scale a pest control company, um, and all these different ways that you could or should do it depending on what market you're in. Um, but to Casey's point. In the beginning, you kind of have to decide why you're doing it. You know, obviously you want to have a purpose like, what is this thing for? What's it going to do for me? Mm -hmm. What kind of value is this going to bring me and my family and my organization? Um, And like Casey said, if if you're trying to build a pest control company and your whole goal is that you could sell out to a big box brand in five, six years for whatever the multiple might be at the time, um, you you might have some certain strategies in mind Mm -hmm. that you follow, Mm -hmm. right? Um, and Alan, uh, one of the things that he always said was like the, the best way to build a company to sell is to build it, not to sell, you know, like, Oh yeah, that's a, to kind of maintain the quality. Right. Yep. Um, but, yeah. uh, you know, it's, it's kind of a different path that you end up taking depending on what you want to do. Like, am I building myself a job? There's a lot of solo operators out there, really good solo operators. Um, there's dudes yeah. who will put down a million dollars in production, top line revenue, just doing routes themselves. 
right? Yeah. Like mostly commercial, but you know, they can pull that off and like technically that's all their money. Um, but like there is a limitation to that as a solo operator. Um, and that's, that's a lot of time. <laughs> that's a lot of time and a lot of work. Um, and I think at least for us and, and Jake can kind of chime in here too. Um, you know, we wanted to obviously provide something that uh, would be wonderful for our families long-term where we could be a lot more involved, um, in the years where our kids need us the most, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, I don't want to just retire when my kids already have a family of their own and I can be grandpa. Yeah. You know, I want to have a lot more time and value when, um, my kids are growing up, yep. you know, and I, I I'm still just dad. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but we also want to provide opportunities for all the people we work with. I mean, you think about all the, all the relationships yeah. we've had with all of our employees, all the guys that sell for us, mm -hmm. you know, um, you don't really have that unless you're planning on kind of building and, and growing your company and providing opportunities to other people. Yeah. So. You know, um, Jana and I, I mean, from the very beginning, before we even started Natura, the, the, the vision for us as a family or as a couple was that, uh, is that we would want to get to a place financially where we could, you know, quote unquote, retire young uh, be there, have great, great, uh, great time with our kids when they're young. Um, and then as they start getting married and, and going off that we would have all the time in the world to be wherever they are and be doing their things and to, you know, serve in our church and to serve in the community and to not be limited, uh, with our time, uh, because we are spending our time trading our time for money. And so, you know, putting in the grind while your back is still upright and while your hips and your knees and your elbows uh, <laughs> all are functioning, you know, without having to overdose on glucosamine chondroitin, you know, <laughs> I pop, I pop glucosamine like, like candy, you know, I'm addicted to that stuff. But, um, but that was the idea all along was to get to a point where, where we have the, the time freedom to do as we choose. And something that, that took me a while to really grasp and it, in reading Dan Martell's book, um, buy back your time. I am finally after five, four or five years getting comfortable with the idea that it's okay for me to be less busy. Mm. You know, like I struggled with that because I, I'm uh, not that I'm a workaholic, but it's just like you spend so many years grinding away and so many years busting your butt that by the time you get you get your organization set up where you've got the right people, good people in all the right places and you can step back and all of a sudden your time frees up, then uh, then I think that some owners get this time guilt, right? Mm -hmm. do, you, do you ever experience that, Casey, where you're like, oh, I, I've got time today shoot i feel guilty about that yeah i'm way more productive when i have a ton of things to do and mm -hmm. the like yesterday mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. i mean i'll work up until three four o'clock in the morning just to execute that and i yep. can figure out i do have the time like why am i not just back to back executing tasks and, and using my time wisely. And so that's been a hard thing to learn is when I do have the liberty to execute tasks, it's a little bit harder for me to stay motivated. I like the pressure that comes yeah. from the job. So do you ever get anxiety? Uh, when, when you don't, when you look at your calendar and you're like, Oh, I've got free time today. Like, what am, what, and then back of your mind, here? you're like, wait, what's, what's, what's wrong? What's, what, what's happening? Why, why do you have free something, time? Something's going to happen. Yeah. Something, something's, yeah, something's, happen. something's bad. Something's bad. Yeah. You know? Yep. Yeah. It's like if, <laughs> if someone ever says, they're like, Hey, uh, do you have the day off tomorrow? I saw you have the day off and you're like, don't say anything. Don't, <laughs> yeah. you're going to jinx it. Something's going to yeah. happen. Yeah. Oh, dude, Casey, yeah, this has been awesome, man. I, uh, I really appreciate all the time that you've put into kind of sharing some of your thoughts and, and, uh, you know, just what Hydropest is doing out there, man. You guys have big things. I'd love to check in with you, you know, end of the season, maybe oh, next totally. year. Yeah. Kind of see what you guys have accomplished and, and mm -hmm. the ways that you've grown. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah I get a t-shirt too. Oh yeah. Yeah. We'll drop the swag swap. <laughs> I've got, I've got uh, both, so. <laughs> yes, it's on a sticky note. Oh yeah, it's so gonna happen. If people want yeah. to follow you and support you, what's the best way for them to do that? Uh, so Facebook and Instagram, we're very active on there. Uh, at Hydro Pest Control or at Hydro Pest 
on Instagram. Uh, you can find us on there. Love it. Some good content. We'd love it. Okay. I'm going to follow you right now. Perfect. Cool. Great. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Well, hey, for everybody else listening, uh, we appreciate you taking the time to listen in. If you have a coworker, manager, or owner who could benefit from listening to this episode, the best way to say thank you to us is to share this episode with them. If you haven't joined the Facebook group yet, go find the group and join. It's Bug Bucks Plus. Lots of information and great connections there. And if you have a topic you want discussed here on the show, drop it in the group. As always, this episode is brought to you by Bug Bucks Plus, the number one training and education platform designed to help you build and scale your pest control company. Visit bugbucksplus.com to sign up and start building today. Thanks again for listening in. And until next time, keep building those pest control companies. If you enjoyed today's episode, please show your support by subscribing and leaving us a five-star rating. Thank you. And we'll catch you on next week's episode.